Hey there planners. I recently did a flip through of my new rings planner that I'm using for the month of November and December. And I showed you guys all of the um, custom planner inserts that I made myself in Canva. And I asked if you guys would be interested in seeing a tutorial on how I made these. You said yes. Overwhelmingly in the comments, I got several requests to show how I made these inserts in Canva. It's super simple. So that's what I'm doing today. I'm going to walk you through step by step how I made these inserts. So go grab your planners and let's get planning. All right, so Canva is a really awesome tool. If you are not familiar with Canva, you can do so much in Canva. It is free to use. There's also a paid uh, pro version that you can access as well. However, there are so many features of free Canva. I used the free version of Canva for years, like seven, eight years before very recently moving over to the pro version. Um, just because I use it so much for this channel, uh, thumbnails and things like that, um, that I did end up finding some really great value in being able to use the pro version. However, I'm a huge advocate for free, and I would say that you can do almost anything you need to do in the free version, especially when you're pairing Canva with some sources of free images like Pixabay and Pexels, things like that. Um, you can do almost anything you want to do in Canva. So today I'm going to be focused on making planner inserts in Canva. Um, and this is great if you are, you know, if you don't have Microsoft Word or aren't familiar with tools like um, Adobe, Acrobat Pro, all of that stuff. Um, Canva is a fantastic tool for that. And again, it's free. I will have lots of links down in the description box below of all the things I'm mentioning. Um, so make sure you check out the description box below. But let's get into the tutorial of how I make my planner inserts. And I'm actually going to focus on making a weekly insert, but you can actually use the concepts that I am going to show here to make any insert you want. If you're interested in seeing more about all the inserts I made in this planner, I will have the flip through of this planner listed down in the description box below so you can see what other possibilities are out there. Okay, so let's get started with the tutorial. All right, so the first thing you're going to want to do is go to canva.com and if you do not already have a Canva account, you're going to want to sign up for an account. Again, you can do this for free. Um, so no cost there. Just put in your email address, create a login and password, and you're up and running. So this is the kind of front page, home page of Canva once you're signed into your account. First thing we're going to do is create a new design. So I'm going to click on create a new design and I get some options. There are thousands and thousands of templates in Canva for things you might want to make, like a book cover or a resume or um, some iPhone wallpaper. You can definitely search for um, any templates that you're looking for, a PowerPoint presentation, all kinds of things. Or you can choose to customize your size, which is what I'm going to do. So I click on custom size and I get this option to put in the width and height. Right now it's set to pixels. I'm going to switch that to inches because I'm going to be making a planner insert in inches. Now you want to make sure that you've measured your planner and you know what size you want your inserts to be. I have used the same size for all of my inserts, so I'm going to put that in. The width for me is 5.8 and the height for me is 8.2. So that's the size I've been making all of my inserts. I want to keep this consistent with that size. So I put in my dimensions and then I hit create new design. Okay, now that I have my blank canvas, I'm ready to start making my insert. I did want to go over just quickly what's over here, what are your options over here, just to orient you in Canva. So the first thing you'll notice is I have a ruler up here and a ruler on the side. That's really important for um, being able to measure if you're going to be punching this 
insert like it goes into a rings or a binder you're going to want to leave that space in order to be able to punch it um, and you know just being able to measure where a center things like that if you do not see the rulers it's very easy to add those to the view you go to file and then you will hit show rulers and guides um, make sure that's checked and then you'll be able to see those. Over here on the left, the first option is templates. So there are a ton of Canva templates that you can use um, for various things. You can search the templates if you want to. There's probably even some weekly planner templates. If you wanted to search that, um, you, you could probably find those as well. You also have elements. So elements are things like lines and shapes, graphics, stickers, photos, videos, charts, Charts, tables, uh, frames that you can put pictures in. Um, there's lots and lots of options here. If you are using the free version of Canva, you're going to want to pay attention to anything over here on the left hand side where you see a crown. Um, and I'm hovering over the crown, you can see the word pro there. That means that that is only available if you are paying for a professional um, subscription. If you do want to use one of those, some of them allow you to have like a one-time use where you would pay, you know, a dollar or something like that to use them. But again, I don't think that's necessary to do most of the things you would want to do in Canva. Um, so free version is absolutely wonderful. Lines and shapes is something that I use quite frequently when I'm making templates as well as tables. Um, tables are a little tricky in Canva, but I, after some practice, I've learned to use them and they're great for making inserts. Um, uploads is a place where you can upload your own files like photos and things like that. This is where I would recommend using a site like Pixabay or Pexels where you can grab some free photos that are copyright free and use them in your planner if you would like to, some designs, things like that. Then you also have text options. There's lots of different text options um, and then background styles, photos, a whole bunch of other things that you can use over here on the side. But really elements, uploads, and text are kind of where I will spend the most time making inserts. So let's start with text. I'm going to add a little bit of text. I clicked on add subheading. I'm going to add a little bit of text to this insert and call this weekly plan. Now, of course, you can name this anything you want to. Once I have it typed, I can use this little cross arrow to move it around the page anywhere I want to. I'm going to put it up here in the top and put it over here. So because I have the guides turned on, you can see I'm getting, when I am moving this around, I'm getting the little purple box that's telling me, first of all, that when I get to the center, it's telling me when something is centered. It's also telling me where the typical printing area is, where the margins would be. So that's that box that you see popping up. Um, I don't always pay attention to that. I ignore that a lot of times. Um, but I'm going to put this over in the top left. Now, I need to think about how this page is going to sit in my planner. If this page is going to be on the, if I'm printing the front of a piece of paper, meaning my rings would be over here on the left hand side, then I need to leave a gutter place for those rings to be punched, for the holes to be punched. And you can see up here on my ruler, I've got about half an inch. That's what I'm going for. I'm going to put this in the half an inch position and that should be plenty of space for me to punch holes. If you're not sure how much space you need, go ahead and practice in your planner. Take, take a piece of paper, punch it, and then measure how far the holes need to be. And for anything that is on the front of the page, then you would need the holes to be on the left and anything on the uh, on the back side of the page you would need the holes to be on the right so just keep that in mind one of the tricks that i have done in the past when i'm making multiple pages is i will go over to elements and i will go to shapes and i will take a square and add that to my cam canvas now once the square is there, I can change it to any color I want. I'm just going to make this a light gray. And then I will make this half an inch wide. And you can see as I'm moving, as I'm sliding the size, 
I can see my width and height changing over there. So I'm going to make this half an inch wide and then move this up to the top corner and drag it all the way down and that tells me that's where my gutter is. So this is really handy because you can see I wanted this to be half an inch over and it's actually in the gray. So I'm going to move it out of the gray. Now before I export this and print it, I will get rid of this square, but this really does help me kind of lay things out. And then when I do the back side of the page, I would move this over to the back to the right side so I would know that's where my holes go. Okay. Um, let's say I don't love this font. I want a different font. I click on the words and you can see I get a whole bunch of text options up here. So here's my font. I'm going to click in here and see what other options I have for fonts. Um, all of my recently used fonts are here. Again, this is a place where you want to pay attention where you see a crown. That means that is a, only available if you have a pro version or if you're willing to pay for it. Um, so there are gazillions of font options. You could lose a lot of time in the day, and I say that from experience, playing around with font options. One of the tricks that I think is really handy in Canva is you can actually search. So if I click in this search box up here, I get some categories to search for. So let's say I want something that is um, vintage looking, right? So I can click on the search term vintage and then I get a whole selection of vintage fonts. Again, paying attention to where the crowns are, I want to stay with the free stuff. Um, Dream Avenue is actually one of my very favorite fonts, so I'm going to use that and now I get this um, this font up here. Size is something that you can play around with. It might be something that you want to try and then print and see how that looks in your planner um, because you know you don't want a font too small that you can't read it, but you also don't want too, one too big that takes up too much room. So, okay, I think I have that the way I want it. Now, what I do want to do is I want to include a line that allows me to be able to write the date in. So I'm over here on elements. I'm going to click on the line to add one to the page. I'm going to slide it up here to the top and if I'm feeling like, gosh, that's really hard to see, I'm going to come up here and zoom in a little bit so I can really get down on this line and make sure it's placed exactly where I want it to be. Now, one thing you'll notice, like, see, it's not quite going where I want it to go. I have found that if I zoom in a little further, I get a little bit more detailed ability to place it where I want it to go. So see, now I can get it where I want it to go. I think that line is a little bit too thick compared to this font. So I'm going to come up here and again, always at the top, you've got some options. I'm going to come up here to line style and you can see I have a line weight right now. It's set at four. I'm going to set it to two. And even that I think is a little too thick, so I'm going to set it to one. Oh, that's perfect. So that's the kind of line I wanted. And then I'm going to drag it out to the edge of the page, making sure that I keep it straight. And that's going to be my line where I can write in what the dates for the week are. All right, so I've got my header. Now I want to include my days of the week. I'm going to go with a box style day, so I'm going to have um, a blank space and then a box for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So almost like eight boxes across two pages. Now this means that I need to be thinking about this not as just designing one page, but designing two. So I'm actually going to add another page because my weekly plan is going to spread across two pages. And that means that my planner pages are going to have to face each other. So this would be the back page and this would be the front page. Um, so what I'm going to do is actually move this guy over here because this is my back page. This is where my holes uh, for my planner would be. And then that means now I need to move these two. Now a really handy trick in Canva, if I want to select these two items and move them, I can just click 
and drag and as long as my mouse touches on those items it selects everything and then I can just drag it over. All right, so now this is set up to be my back page. I wanna copy this element, this box that shows me where my holes are gonna be, and I want to um, paste it over on the second page so that I can use it there as well. I'm gonna click on it and highlight it, and then I'm going to hold down on my keyboard Control C for copy. And then I'm gonna come down into the second page, click on the page, and hit Control B. Now it shows up copied there on the second page, and I'm gonna slide it over to this side because this will be the front page where my holes are gonna be. All right, now it's time for me to add in my boxes. So I have a, you have a couple of different options here. You can use a square, you can use lines, or you can use a table, which I actually really like to use the table function because the table function gives you the ability to change the borders, um, add some color in the middle, uh, give it you know dotted lines, outline versus a straight line. There's just more options with tables. Now tables are a little tricky. Um, so I'm gonna walk through some of the things I have learned, but I encourage you to play around with tables. It's, it's fun and you'll learn a lot with it. Okay. So let's say I just want one. I just want one box, but I've got this table here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click in one of the boxes and click on the three dots above it. And I actually want to delete this whole column. So I'm gonna delete that. And then I'm gonna do the same thing again. I'm gonna delete this column. So now I'm down to one column, but I don't need all these other rows, so I'm gonna repeat the same process click i'm going to click in the second box and then over here on the row side i'm going to click in the three little dots and i'm going to delete the row and i'm going to keep repeating that until i get down to one box and this is what i mean by tables can be a little tricky and it you know it takes some playing around with okay now i have my one box so now i can resize it just by clicking and dragging and making it the size I think it needs to be. So, and you can always see the size as you're pulling and dragging. So I've got 2.2 and 3.3. I think that will work, let me try it. So if I bring it up here, that tells me, my lines are telling me where the center vertically and where the center horizontally is. So I'm gonna put that there and then I want to duplicate this box. So I come over here and click on the, to select the entire element, you always use the little cross arrows. So I'm gonna click that and I get this little uh, duplicate button, which looks like two squares with a plus. So I'm gonna click that. Now I have another one. So let me drag this down here where I want it. And then I wanna do that again. So let me click the crosses and duplicate and then drag that one over here and place it where I think it needs to go. Okay, so now I have my Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday box, but I need this to be repeated on the second page for the rest of the days of the week. To keep this really simple, I'm going to click and drag to highlight all three of those. So now I've got all three of those highlighted. I'm you can either use Control C or you can click on the three dots and copy. And then right click on the page and paste. So now I have my three dots in there. Put that there. I need another box because I'm missing one. So let me duplicate this one. And now I have my fourth box and I want to get this lined up really evenly takes a little bit of playing around okay so if I zoom out you can see I have a Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday Friday Saturday Sunday boxes and I have a free space that I can use for you know decor or to-do list things like that all right, so there's my weekly setup, but it's a little plain. 
So I am actually going to come in and add some days of the week at the top. So that means a little bit more text. So let me go over to the text feature. I'm going to add in a heading and I will type Monday and move that up here to the top of the box. And then I'm going to change the font. I really like that Dream Avenue. So I'm going to go back to the beginning and get out of the search feature and it will tell me it's got my most recently used fonts up here so I can change that to Dream Avenue. I'm going to bring that down in size a little bit. And now I have my Monday header. So I'm going to, mm, I don't like the way that's placed. Let me bring that down a little bit. Perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and add in weekday headers for the rest of these boxes. And I'm leaving the space here so I can actually put the date there beside it. All right, so now I have all my headers and you can see if I zoom out, you can see what this is going to look like. I've got Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So this is very minimal. Let's say I want to add just a little bit of decor. And um, since we're right here at the holidays, I'm going to go over to elements and I'm going to search for holly. And let's see if I can find some holly. And I'm actually going to click on graphics. Um, I just want some really simple graphics. Okay, now pay attention to where the crowns are. Here's one without a crown and it's very simple. I love this. Um, I'm going to bring this up here and you can see I can even change the color. Let's say I wanted it to be red. I could add a little color um, or I can just keep it black. So I'm going to shrink this down and I can also rotate it and move it around to where I want it to be. I'm going to put this on the corners and I'm going to make a couple of these. Bring this one down and put this on the corner. And that kind of frames up my empty box here where I want to put you know, my to-dos or, you know, whatever I, else I want there. So lots of options for adding a little bit of decor. You could do Christmas lights, you could do spring flowers or um, Easter eggs, all kinds of fun things are available. All right, so I think my insert here is ready to go. Um, one thing I did want to show you, let's say you don't really love these dark black lines. If I click into the the box. I can come over here and I have a lot more options with borders and lines. Let's say I only want my box to have a top and bottom border. I can change that here. I could um, change the color of the border. So let's say I want something a little less, um, less dark. So I change this to gray. And now I've got this really nice gray line so it's not so in your face. Um, so lots of options. Just wanted to show you that there's a lot of options there to do some customization of the boxes. All right. Once I have my insert ready to go, I want to make sure it's named what I want it to be. So I'm going to call it weekly planner insert box because I also have some vertical and, you know, other styles. So that's the name I want it to have. Now I'm ready to download this product, um, this insert and save it to my files. I would come over here to share and then I'm going to download this and you would download it as a, um, you have a couple of different options. You can download it as an image. You can download it as a PDF. You can download it as um, a, SVG, a, J, a JPEG, all kinds of different options. I typically do PNGs or PDFs for planner inserts. That way I can just print them and put them right in my planner. Once you have your format selected, then you're going to download and it will ask you where you want to save it. So you want to save it in um, your files, wherever you keep your planner inserts. 
All right, so that was a very, very simplistic tutorial for how to create inserts in Canva. I tried to keep it very simple uh, just as to get you familiar with how to use Canva and the different features. You can do lots of other designs. As you can see, I have um, you know, come up with different designs that I want for different things. One thing I'll say is that if you're not sure what, uh, how you want to make it, take a look at some inserts. So go to some Etsy shops, go to your favorite planner shops and take a look at different formats and designs for how you can create the different pages that you want to create. Canva has so many features, it can be a bit overwhelming. And so what I would encourage you to do is start simple. The tutorial I just showed with the seven box style uh, weekly insert and then build from there and you you know play around with it give yourself time um, and you know it's it's really fun to be able to completely customize your own inserts I hope you enjoyed this video I hope you got some value out of it leave your questions and comments down below and I look forward to hearing how your insert making is going if you enjoyed the video give it a thumbs up subscribe to Plan and Annie for more content like this and as always, thanks for planning with me.